In this video, we are going to find the relative density of the solid which is heavier than the liquid with respect to any liquid. So usually we do this experiment by using Archimedes principle with the help of water, but you can use any liquid over here, right? So first of all for this experiment, we would be requiring a spring balance. Now the spring balance actually measures the weight of the object, right? So this is say for example a stone and the volume of the stone is Vs. Now since this stone is heavier than the water, so it is going to sink in the water, right? Now its weight in air is Wa. So let me specify that this is the weight of stone in air, which can be also written as mass of the stone times g. So when you multiply mass and g, you will eventually get the weight of the stone in the air. Now this is the Eureka can, also known as overflow can or overflow jar. And it can be maximum filled till here because if you try to fill more liquid then it is going to overflow out. So right now it is completely filled and this is an empty vessel which is placed over a weighing balance, digital weighing balance. Now since this stone is still not immersed inside the liquid, it will be still weight in the air. Now the moment I immerse this completely inside this liquid, the liquid is going to exert the upthrust or the buoyant force resulting in the decrease in the weight. So due to the upthrust acting in the upward direction, this weight is going to reduce. So this is the weight of the object in the liquid and this is also known as apparent weight, which is the weight in the liquid. So since upthrust is acting on it, this weight will be less than the weight in the air. So I should write a point over here that weight of weight in the air is larger than the weight in the liquid. Now since if you immerse this completely inside the liquid, there is an upward force acting on it from the center of buoyancy. But since it, the, I don't have any space over here, so I'll be just showing here. So this is the upward force that is FL, which is the upthrust exerted by the surrounding liquid on this stone. Due to this force, this weight in air will be reduced. Now we know that Archimedes principle states that weight in air minus the weight in liquid is equal to upthrust. And one more thing, the moment you are going to immerse this stone inside the liquid, liquid is going to overflow out. Some amount of liquid overflows out and its volume. So I'm going to say that this is the what liquid which is displaced out. So volume of the liquid displaced VLD, right? So some amount of liquid goes out of the container and it is collected in this beaker. So the volume of this liquid is known as volume of liquid displaced, which is equal to the volume of the stone that we have already seen. So this is equal to volume of the stone when completely immersed. When you partially immerse it, so half the volume or whatever the amount of volume which is inside the liquid will be the volume of liquid displaced. But for sure these two will be the same. Now its weight will be recorded over here. So weight of the liquid displaced. Now this weight of the liquid displaced will be equal to the upthrust. Weight of liquid displaced will be equal to the upthrust acting in the upward direction. This is what is Archimedes principle which is previously taught to you. Most of the students they have confusion that this is equal to the weight in the air which is not true. The weight of the liquid displaced and the weight in the air are never true. So this is an experiment and we are going to derive an expression on the basis of these readings. Okay. So now let's start from the beginning. Relative density of the stone which is of course heavier than the liquid. You can also consider the liquid as water then it will become specific gravity over here because specific gravity is the ratio of density of the stone to the density of water. Here I have taken a liquid. That liquid can be water also but if that is liquid, if that liquid is water then this will be specific gravity of stone with respect to liquid is equal to density of the stone upon density of the liquid. I should be very careful during the mathematical calculations. Now this density of stone is mass of the stone divided by volume of the stone upon 
density of liquid is equal to mass of the liquid divided by volume of the liquid. Now you can see very clearly that the liquid is present over here also in the Eureka can and the liquid is over here also. But we want measurements. So I know the weight of this liquid and I know the volume of this, this liquid which is in this area. So I am going to consider the liquid over here for the mass and the volume, not this one because I don't know the mass and volume of the liquid which is inside the Eureka can. So since this is a beaker, it will have graduations. So I know the volume of the liquid displaced and since it is over the weighing machine, I will also find the weight of the liquid displaced. Now since these two are same, now since this is displaced liquid, so these two are same already mentioned. So finally you are going to get mass of the stone upon mass of the liquid displaced. Now if I multiply these two up and down by g, this is nothing but the weight of the stone. Now this is the weight of the stone in the air. So over here I have weight in air Wa upon this is mass times g. So it is weight. Weight of what? Weight of the liquid displaced. And that can be written as weight in air upon the upthrust because as per Archimedes principle these two are the same. So upthrust now it can also be simplified further as weight in air upon weight in air minus weight in liquid which is the final conclusion. So let me finally put it up over here relative density of any solid with respect to liquid is equal to weight in air upon weight in air minus the weight in that particular liquid which is the apparent weight or simply you can also remember this as weight in air upon the upthrust. Now this formula would definitely be holding true for all kinds of solid but now see since this was an experiment right mostly we carry out this experiment with water but suppose if this substance is soluble in water then you will have to change the liquid and you will have to find a suitable liquid in which this particular object is insoluble and then you will have to carry out the experiment. Under that situation this will be the relative density itself. But if you carry out this experiment with water, please remember that this relative density will be specific gravity of the solid. Once again I am laying an emphasis to this particular part that if this object is soluble in water, if you are performing this with water then you need to replace this liquid you, you have to replace this water with some different liquid in which this object is not soluble. So since this was an experiment, right, we know the weight in the air by just looking at the spring balance over here and we know the weight in the liquid as well. We will have to look at the spring balance when the object is immersed. Now based on these two readings, we can find out the relative density of the so solid with respect to liquid.